So, you know, the story of the electric drive is really a story about efficiency. How do we take all this battery energy that Bill just talked about and very um, efficiently and effectively drive the wheels? And that's, that's ultimately what the customer is looking for, is to maximize this notion of electric range, to maximize this notion of efficiency of the generator uh, when we have to use it. And so this is, that's what we're going to focus on, and you're going to hear me talk about um, trade-offs decisions around efficiency um, quite a lot. And so what are we talking about for the pieces and parts? This is a top view of the electric drive system. It's all packaged in the front of the car. It's a very compact package. We have an inline configuration. Um, between, oh, let me start here. So uh, DC energy coming into the inverter. This is the inverter module. When you lift the hood of the car, you'll be able to see that very prominently. Um, then we have uh, the AC cables going to the electric drive, which is packaged a little bit underneath here. It contains two electric motors. <coughs> and the output uh, of that electric drive uh, through the half shafts here um, moves the wheels, provides torque to the wheels. And then when we get into range extending mode, the internal combustion engine, which is right here, um, uh, kicks in to provide us with uh, additional energy. So that's sort of the topology of the system. Go ahead. And so now let's take a look inside this electric drive. So it's an on-axis configuration. So you can see the, uh, the output uh, down here. If the uh, range extending engine were attached, it would be here and you have this on-axis configuration. Here's a large traction motor that's connected to the output. That uh, large traction motor has the ability to um, utilize 111 kilowatts of electrical energy to provide 370 newton meters of torque. The generator motor is kind of tucked in here, um, a little bit harder to see. It's uh, significantly smaller than the traction motor, and it can generate about 55 kilowatts of energy. And so we actually have a cutaway of this. Uh, You'll go downstairs in a little bit and you can see the, the actual physical pieces and parts. There's also one planetary gear set that's sort of tucked in the end of this traction motor. Um, a gear final drive, which is here, with, through this differential. And then there are three clutches, tough to see in this picture. I guess two of them are sort of packaged in the space that's in the ID inside diameter of the traction motor. And another one that's packaged sort of in the ID of this generator motor. Next slide, please. Okay, the internal combustion engine. We'll talk about it now because um, um, we're not going to talk a lot about it uh, in the when we go through the mechanics and how, how the car actually works. But we have this 1.4 liter um, dual overhead cam engine. This is from our family zero of engines, sort of tried and true, tried and true performance, reliability, durability. It does have a cast iron block, aluminum cylinder, he cylinder heads. Um, four valves per cylinder overhead camshafts, continuously uh, variable intake and exhaust cams, uh, and uh, multi-port fuel injection, electronic throttle control, and a, no a number of other specifications here. But uh, what I want to talk about is you'll notice that the output of the engine, we're rating the power at 63 kilowatts at 4,800 RPM. So those that aren't interested in engines, um, you know, that's the so, so what. Those that are, you know that this engine obviously has the capability of revving much higher and producing much more output. But this is really a study in right sizing, right sizing an engine, internal combustion <coughs> engine um, uh, for this extended range capability. We're almost like repurposing an internal combustion engine uh, to provide this very unique type of propulsion. So that's how much, that's how much power output we determined we needed for this car that has a very large battery, you know, an almost a half size engine in terms of displacement. That's what we determined we needed to provide you with the average power required to do uh, an urban and highway type commute. You'll see, I'll touch on one last thing, premium fuel required. Why is that? Well, I'm not going to tell the whole engine story, although it is quite interesting and would be a, a whole other study we could do. But you know, this engine operates and behaves very differently than in a conventionally powered vehicle. The RPM bandwidth is much smaller. When the engine runs, it runs at or near wide open throttle at a fairly low speed. So with that, we can really capitalize on the benefits of premium fuel and we can up the, the efficiency significantly, you know, five to upwards of 10% by running premium fuel so that you know, you trade that off versus maybe about a 3% premium on premium fuel costs, 
you know, it's sort of a wash in the end. So we thought that was the right decision uh, for this car. So some of you that I talked to last night, I talked about this notion of how the car drives and how, how the car has EV character all the time. But, you know, how do, I, how do I use words to describe EV character? So I have a couple graphs here, so if you can bear with me, I'll try to explain to you when I talk about EV character and the fact that this car, um, obviously when it's in electric mode, pure EV, that's uh, easy to have EV, e electric character, but even in range extending mode we have it. This notion that we lead with the battery and we follow with the internal combustion engine to make up the average power. So let me take a stab here at trying to explain how that maintains EV character. So, so what we've got here is a chart that shows engine speed on the uh, vertical axis and vehicle speed on the horizontal axis. And we're going to do about an 80% uh, pedal acceleration. So not wide open throttle, but still quite aggressive. And then here's the behavior of some products that uh, you're probably familiar with. We have a uh, conventionally powered a Malibu with a 2.4 liter engine. And you can see that uh, almost immediately, uh, the engine's probably running at idle, and so it's running at idle, that's why the speed's elevated here. You tip in, the vehicle accelerates, you shift through uh, three speeds of the six-speed transmission by the time you reach 90 miles an hour. Um, if you look at a, a 2010 Prius, you can see that um, almost instantly the engine turns on, and the engine turns on to supplement and propel that vehicle also um, up to 90 miles an hour. And you get a fairly similar response from a Ford Fusion Hybrid where uh, the engine turns on uh, very quickly when you step into that 80% throttle, accelerates, the engine's leaned on pretty heavily out here, almost 6,000 RPM, and you'll accomplish that uh, 90 miles an hour. And so if the Volt is in electric mode, if you're driving electrically, what happens? And, you know, obviously the engine doesn't come on. There is no internal combustion engine. We can accelerate the car wide open throttle to 100 miles an hour. So you could have the full performance envelope of the car all electrically. And that to me is a very important point and a point that um, um, I hope you really get a chance to appreciate today when you have uh, not this contest going on. But you can have the full performance envelope of the car all electrically. Okay, now we're going to go into range extending mode and what happens? Did you just give us permission to go to 100 miles an hour? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, same accelerations we just talked about, so I don't have to walk through that. Now we're in range extending mode, so we're using the internal combustion engine when we need it to help maintain the battery buffer required to operate the car. And what will happen in this case is, you'll see that we'll start to accelerate the car, the engine stays off, it stays off in this, under this heavy acceleration to 20 miles an hour. Under a lighter acceleration, it would stay off to even a higher speed. And then the engine follows on behind to make up the average power that's being consumed to propel the car. And so to do that, you know, this gets into the study of right-sizing the engine. You know, the engine speed is um, uh, significantly lower than the other examples given here. So, you know, under a normal acceleration, mostly from the battery, higher accelerations, you know, we pull from that battery, but then we follow on with the engine to make up that average power. So when I talk about leading with the battery, following with the engine, maintaining EV character under um, all modes of the Volt's operation, that, that's kind of what I'm talking about. 